What's up? What's happening? Welcome to another edition of The Short Porch presented by Barstool Sports. A very special edition. Number 300. 300 is just an unbelievable amount of talking. And if you think about it, 40 to an hour every time. Um, but yeah, we're in studio. Myself, Tommy Smokes, Marty Mush, Noah on the ones and twos. And a very special guest. Couldn't think of anybody else we'd want on the pod for number 300. He'll be along with us the whole the whole ride. Jabba Chamberlain, back on the pod for the second time, long-awaited second time. How's it going, pal? Same shit, different day. Here we go. You know, it's seeing it was 300. I'm like, whoa, you guys, somebody that actually listened to you for 300 times. It's, exactly. I mean, that's impressive. Uh, that doesn't mean anyone's yeah. listening. That just means we've not put them cool. out. <laughs> well, True. They just keep saying yes and, and keep tuning in. They keep point. sending us ad reads, so we assume we're like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, no we one's canceled us yet. So we're we're, we're honestly like week to week. Like, oh, we got another email for ad reads. All right, guys, got to figure out an episode show. next week. <laughs> sure, no problem. Um, no, three hundred is crazy. Uh, but yeah, we got you along for the ride. The first time you came on was just our actual like introduction, like to you, like us talking in general. And now. <laughs> I think it's technically his third appearance. Wasn't the second oh, okay, time okay. we had him like uh, over FaceTime? Me, uh, That's fair. Me, yeah, after, after the live stream, we didn't yeah, hear what Cole struck out like Braves a million. Braves or Angels game? One of them. Yeah. Oh, no, it was the Braves game because yeah. it got tight. And we were talking about chatting yeah, afterwards. Yep. You, you, watch, you watch games like you're still playing. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> it's a fucking like, nut job. I'm, I, yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's too, like legitimately the last two games – like I literally had to be home, like because I didn't want people like they're talking about certain things when they're not they make no sense. So I legitimately ordered pizza one day, made tacos the other day, and literally was on the couch with two iPads, my computer going, like looking up stupid stats, listening to the game, and it's just like just the perspective that you get because you know the feeling because you've been there, but then also being a fan and seeing it from you know, the, the other side of it, but like just, just the little nuances and stupid stats from the world series, like Terrence Gore just won his third world series and he has two plate appearances and five stolen bases. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, it's unbelievable. No, that's a dream. That's literally to be like, that's like barely... when James Jones went to eight straight NBA finals. Yeah. He was just on LeBron's team. Every oh day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Like that's now he's GM the of like the year. That's a guy oh, yeah. on the uh, Josh Johnson who came into the. Uh, uh, he's an NFL guy. He's been there for 13 years. He's played seven games. He was on the Jets, I believe, just recently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's all. Correctly. That's mm-hmm. the dream. Years. That's a game you want to. That's a type of player. Pablo Sandoval be. getting a ring wasn't on the team uh, See, for like, the second half of the year. A player like you, you were too hot in the streets. You were throwing a hundred. You were like too good, and people were always expect things from you. If you fucking whatever that guy's name was, you just said, I don't even know. He's got two World Series. No, he has three. 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 <laughs> See? He has three. Him. And he and he legit has two plate appearances, five stolen bases. And in his career, and he's probably I think he's played seven or eight like overall years. He only has a hundred A Bs, I think seventy two official plate appearances, and the dude flies. So no matter what in the postseason, it's like and obviously you can't teach speed. It adds pressure and there's obviously the game is changing. We'll see what happens with this bargain green coming in December first. But yeah. You know, you got three World Series more than I mean. I mean, Mike Trout's been in the playoff once, and he's got three <laughs> World Series and doesn't have as many at bats or plate appearances that Mike does in the literally first two months of the season. That's true. That is crazy. I thought you were over exaggerating just now with the at bats because he's been in the league since 2014. He has 67 at bats in his career. That's awesome. Oh, I gave him 72. My bad. And 77 plate appearances. There's just one year where he has above five. In a season, mm-hmm. 2019, the Royals just unleashed Terrence Gore and played him in 37 games. Like, and he hit 275 with a 362 OBP. Actually, had a good year. Um, but uh, yeah, that's crazy. Three he World might Series. Be the tough. secret weapon for people. Yeah, teams I mean, he should just hold out his services as late as he can, and then be yeah. like, all right, you're a good, you're a good team. He's anime. got the dream. Coley always says like Trout has the dream, and obviously, like he's got all that money. But like, there's no expectations with Trout ever. Um, he just lives in LA. He's content with just not like you know, winning ever clearly by re-signing with the Angels. Collects a big check. He gets hurt a ton, so he barely has to play. He's bar- <laughs> you know, Stanton's played more than him the last like five years. Oh yeah. That's crazy. But no one knows what the Angels are doing, so they just don't see There's anything. no pressure, no expectations, no one cares about LA, yeah. anything. They just like go on with their day. Oh, you lost in sports? Let's just go to the beach. That's yeah. what that's what goes on. Mike Trout, yeah, I mean no surprise he makes a lot of money. But aside from that, great life Mike Trout has has going here. Um we talked about oh you you mentioned like the different nuances with baseball. I was 
interested, actually. We're going to go in and out of baseball with this episode, um, just off of Marty's brain and you always combating him. It's going to go well. But I want to start with baseball here. We just finished with the World Series. The Braves take down the Astros in six. Good job, Braves. Congratulations, Atlanta. Um, the starting pitcher. Now, it did end up where Max Fried ended up pitching very well in the final game, kind of like dispelling the narrative that you don't need starting pitchers anymore. It kind of helps when you have some starting pitchers. You were a pitcher that were fucked with, where you were you know, a starting pitcher one day, a reliever the next day. Now it's almost like, I feel like you would thrive in today's baseball. Like you could, you would have been doing whatever. Like you would have been totally fine. I feel like in that opener role, a closer role, you could have done everything. And now that's more of like back then, it was like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, like you going back and forth. Where now it's like normal. What do you think? Do you think well, you yeah. would have done I mean, well? That now? was kind of like when it, yeah, when it first started, it was you know the back and forth. But now there's so many there's so many dudes that have thrived off of you know being a back end guy but coming in and giving you an inning or two i mean you look at you look at will smith he started as a starter and i mean he i was listening to an interview that he did and he was just talking about you're ready from pitch one when it comes to the postseason and he was like you still at that point if you're starting you still see all those guys that are in the bullpen that they won't they will just create it as as if they're in the bullpen. So as soon as the game starts, they'll run in from the bullpen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you still you still have to try to create that same, I guess, feel of what it is of you going into a normal situation. But I mean, back and forth. I, I think I think back then it was one thing because nobody knew. Now it's if you get presented with that situation where it's like, hey, you know, we might be at game four or five or game twenty five, whatever the case may be. It's like hey, we might run you out there to get going. So I just think the mentality has is different now because it's not such an anom- anomaly to go back and forth. And it's like, hey, you may have to get some opener starts or whatever. And so I just think it's the familiarity and the, the communication of like, hey, we're going to have some opener games or whatever you want to call it. So just keep that in mind throughout the season. Do you like that? Do you like that baseball has taken this shift and like, you know, starting pitchers aren't... Now, I still think... You need really good one, two, three, but your four and five now are kind of like you can get away with having next to nobody there. It's you know it's just like proven that way now. Um, do you like how baseball has gone this way? I think I mean I think there's aspects of it that I that I really like. I think the three batter rule is some of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean for both aspects, you see so many guys that created a career on being those situational guys. And now it's in certain instances we've seen throughout the year where a guy pelts two people and you're like, this is getting dangerous to the point where, you know, hitters are getting uncomfortable, but he has to face three hitters. Like, is there something where you can look at it from a hole? And I mean, obviously there's a lot of things that this December 1st date's going to, going to come upon, but I, I think just the communication factor of where it's not so weird. I mean, obviously we've seen what the Rays have done and how good they've been with the opener aspect of it. And we've seen some other, you know, teams use it to their advantage as well. But, you know, obviously the postseason is a little bit different. But during the season, I think it's just the communication of like, hey, this may happen. So you just keep this in the back of your mind where it's just not you get a call one day and you're like, oh, oh shit, I guess I'm starting today. What, what do you think the general state of baseball is right now? Because I feel like this World Series was as, like, slept on a World Series as there has been in recent memory with just nobody talking about it or sucked. acknowledging. Aside from, like, one game, they right, suck. that it's that going on. Uh, obviously, not the two, not two huge markets. But, you know, with the CBA coming up and everything, it feels like this could be a critical offseason for baseball. How? What do you feel about the current state of baseball? Do you think it's in, in a bad place? I wouldn't necessarily it's in a bad place. I just think there's a state of confusion in in a little bit of it. I don't think there's a lot of it. Obviously, some of the rules that changed during the pandemic, obviously the starting a runner at second. And, you know, the the one thing that confused me about that, you you do it during the regular season. But if that happens in the playoffs, you go back to regular. So what's so what's the difference there? I mean, obviously, we all have our different choices. I've been through two of them. So I kind of understand the talks, you know, and then you've got the universal DH, you know, there's so many baseball enthusiasts that they love the true aspect of both leagues having, you know, it's a different feel. I just think, I, I think it's more so of, of just trying to, obviously you have to get everybody on the same page and do, I think it'll get done. Yeah. I, I think it will change a little bit because sometimes our baseball off season is a little boring because it's so spread out and, 
you know, if they're trying to go through some things and get, you know, money aspect from one side, from the owners and whatever, and then from our side of the union, and then have, you know, everybody get together. If it does go a little bit longer, I think it makes the off season a little bit more interesting because now you're going to have so many people trying to sign late or, yep. I mean, you've already seen Tucker Barnhart already signed today. Yeah. That fucking pissed so me off. I wanted him in New York. <laughs> Good luck. We're <laughs> stuck with Gary Sanchez. Again. I was hoping that, was, um, that that almost like him, them yeah. allowing him to go there makes me fear that we're headed that way. Um, you mentioned you were through two of these. What's it like being a player while like the CBA is getting, so who was your like, uh, MLBPA representative when you were on the Yankees? Do you remember? Uh, it's Britain, I was one, Britain one now. One, oh, you one were one. You, really? Well, you have you have like two, and then you have like an alternate, and then obviously you can all be on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to say my first. I know one was Curtis Granderson when he came over because okay. he was all Mister Everything. That makes sense. Um, oh, you know who was um, after the first one? Because I our first one, I was only in for like a year and a half. Our second one. I think Swish was our guy. Okay. And then I, and then like I was the one. alternate that year, but yeah, I mean the nice thing about it is you don't I mean you don't have to be the head. Like the only the only thing of you being your union rep is you're on every call, you get all the paperwork and everything for like playoff shares and in meetings and all the other stuff. So I mean that's that's the one thing that's different if you're if you're the union rep for your team. But, but during like a CBA yeah, negotiation, that it definitely takes a step up, right? I mean, it does because you go over everything yeah. and in, in spring training is kind of when it starts. And obviously, you know, coming into it because it is, is something that's talked about. People are talking to you about it. Like, what do you, you know, if there's a stoppage, what happens? Go here. But it, it once season starts, you kind of get over it because usually it's it's done before the season even gets there. And the only conversations you'll have through spring training is basically like, hey, did you agree with this or this is what happened? There's obviously compromises on both sides, but I think baseball just in it it's not in a bad state. I think it's in a good state. I think there's obviously with what Otani has done and created buzz for the game. Mm-hmm. Obviously this this World Series wasn't the most exciting, but you had such different fan bases as Atlanta being hungry and and understanding that it's been twenty six years and as somebody that grew up a Braves fan. It, it was fun to see just because I know the history of it and, yeah. and all the guys that played. I mean, you go back from when Tom Glavin threw eight innings, one hit, we win one nothing because of David Justice home run. Right. Obviously, the games are different, but yeah, I, I think I think it was great for the casual fan, mind you. Like some of the games weren't the most entertaining, yeah. But I love the chess match of when bringing guys in and then the bullpen aspect and everything. So for me, it was entertaining. Obviously, you don't want to see a clinching game seven nothing, but it kind of makes you feel a little bit better when you're sitting in that bullpen and you're not chewing your fingernails off. Yeah, that's true. Um, it does feel like baseball is in for a giant change, though, more than ever with this new CBA. And I hate to keep harping on the CBA, but like you're looking at the luxury tax. You know, we, we might be seeing a floor. You know, forcing teams to spend a certain number, which would be unprecedented, obviously, and that almost would make you think maybe a salary cap is coming. Uh, and then you're looking well, at... They kinda, well, they kind of... Well, Hubs, they kind of did that before. When, remember, this was probably six or seven years ago when the Marlins didn't spend anything and their highest play play was $3 million. They ended up signing Jose Reyes and Mark Burley because everybody was like, you're not putting money out. Everybody's paying your luxury tax. Like, So it's been there to an extent. It, it hasn't been official per se, but when they did that and all of a sudden they signed Burley for like 80-some and then Reyes and everybody's like, what are they doing? Yeah. It was kind of pushed on them because they hadn't done anything. So okay. it's been there. It just hasn't been sort like, of an unwritten. Hey, rule. if you don't do this, right, one hundred percent. Well, the pirates right now, I feel like, don't abide by any rules. They just are like, yeah, we don't really care. <laughs> we're we're all set here. But there's been talks of maybe lowering the luxury tax level and like the top, the teams that are getting penalized. You're giving that to the set to the uh, lower tier teams to allow them to spend. There's a lot going back and forth. I thought the craziest thing to me, realizing this, two things from the World Series. Uh, Yuri Gurriel is 37 years old. What? Jesus Christ. I didn't know He that. must have come over at like 30. He's 37 years old. I just, I would guess that guy's 29. If yeah. I just, I had Bad no idea. Ages. That has nothing to do with this. And then also, Jordan Alvarez is going to make $600,000 next year. Because he's got one more year of team control before he hits arbitration. 
he's like the best hitter in baseball. <laughs> he can make yeah, 600. Sorry. That And that's part of why they're going to fucking tear up the CBA and change all these rules. And, and service time is going to be different, I think, with how long it takes you to get the free agency. That's a fucking ginormous problem that, that players have. And well, the thing- all, all the fucking White Sox take... Uh, fucking bargains and ruin their lives, basically. The but. thing they, they got to change, and I'm sure Jabba hates it, the arm barn. The arm barn. <laughs> yes, he's really so mad. So mad. <laughs> the arm barn is fire. The arm barn is here to stay. I Honestly, like, the name fits. I, I'm not, not going to lie about that. It does fit, but the reason and how it was oh, approached correct. in – I, I think it obviously could have been approached in a different way of saying certain things, and obviously I'm not going there because I know my battles to choose, and that's not one you choose to go with. But I think if it was approached in a different way and not some of the vernacular and the verbiage that was used to yeah. defend why it should be the arm barn, which it fits. It, arm it's barn. catchy. It's, I mean, it's honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It makes sense. But then if I want to go and we want to talk about the word barn and how that's used, could we, we could go into yeah. another topic of conversation. Let me, let me tell you something. PETA is someone you, I, PETA came after me when, when my bird flew into the wall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, you can't do that. Oh, I, what do you mean? That, did I tell the bird to fucking fly into you the wall? It. <laughs> no, you, didn't. you encouraged it. You encouraged that environment. Anonymous you also don't want to fuck with. That I got one of those too. No way. Anonymous is bad. you would know. If yeah, you got to fake it. You'd be dead. You You'd be dead. Anonymous is like the the hackers. Oh, oh. They make no, the videos with the people from the V for Vendetta Peter. movie. Oh no no no. Oh no. I don't the want same that. way Aaron Boone encourages a climate in the Yankees uh, clubhouse to be soft. You encouraged Rudy to fly into doors. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of that schmuck, don't you believe? Don't you think the that if, he, if Aaron Boone never hit that home run, we wouldn't have him as a coach? I, I, don't, I don't necessarily say that. Obviously, it helps. Don't get me wrong. But you got to understand his family and the pedigree that he comes from. It's, I mean, you, you cannot agree with all the stuff he does, and we never will no matter who it is. But from the time he's been in diapers, baseball has been ingrained in his mind. Like, even when he was done playing and he was on ESPN, he was, just, he was a pleasure to listen to because it was never about him. It was just always about playing in the stories. And that's the one thing I always loved about him just on TV. And then even now, it's he never he never gives like back when I did this, this is how we did it. It's just like we have to figure something else better. And and sometimes that's not always the easiest question to answer because he gets the same question over and over again. Yeah. And being part of the media, you understand. It's like you want to get an answer, so you keep – Pounding it over his head. At some point, you're either going to break or you're just going to be like, "All right, I'm out. Never mind." I how hear much, that. Oh, sorry. I was, how much do you think a manager matters? That's a good question. Uh, that I mean, playing for different ones, playing obviously from a guy like Tory to then Joe Girardi, then Brad Ausmus, and then Terry Francona. I kind of got a little bit of yeah. like all the guys. Ned Yost being in there too, and I, I think. I think it's you, you take on the culture of your team. I think that as as a manager, you have to understand everybody, which I, I, I get is incredibly hard. And you have to understand, like, hey, there's guys that you can get on and dog cuss them, but then there's dudes you have to, you know, coddle and be like, hey, you know what? We'll get after it. It'll be all right. You know, we'll get through this. And there's other guys you just literally like, hey, pull your head out of your ass. You're better than this. So I think that's the biggest thing is is trying to understand and manage each personality. I mean, you can there's obviously over managing. There's we've all seen Girardi's notebook, that thing, and he's a genius. So <laughs> that comes with part of what he is. But I mean, there's so many analyticals, but also what I do love about certain guys in this game and is there's still a feel. There's still an understanding, yeah, I can read all this stuff, but I just have a good feeling. And I mean a perfect example is Alex Anthopoulos and getting four. He got Eddie Rosario when he was on the DL and couldn't even play. Yeah. Well, he had to yeah. give up Pablo Sandoval. Rosario was I mean, awful really before they got him. Awful. He, Pablo like, Sandoval is the worst player in baseball. Oh, he's the best. Um, <laughs> he's got another <laughs> ring. Rosario was batting like 190, bro. Like He was just but not. I've seen him get hits like, and do well. Like, I know, recent but seeing 190. And, Listen, like, he, he wasn't an MVP. In... Yeah, like he basically carried them in the postseason. Yeah, he like, wasn't that. But like, was but I remember at the time of that trade, people were like, what? what? They just gave him up? 
what's going on here? Yeah. But yeah, Anthopoulos, it's, it's a shame he got COVID. He wasn't able to celebrate them. That sucks. But well, and, and that too surprised me because I was looking for him the whole time, and then all of a sudden, as you're flipping back and forth, and I got like three TVs going, and I'm like, where? Like he's got to be here. And then they end up doing a story. He got it on like last week and he was at home and he let his kids stay up. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, it sucks for him. Like everybody thought he was going to sell, sell, sell. And then next thing you know, he's like, nope, we're going to add guys. This is what we're going to do. And I mean, some of these Jock Peterson stories are absolutely hilarious. Oh, yeah. I mean, good for him. Like only one of nine players ever to win back to back World Series and to do it the way he did. And, you know, it's just. You, you add certain guys like that that you don't think are going to be huge. I mean, shit, you look back, what was it, probably five years ago, Steven Pierce, they get from a midseason trade, he ends up being the MVP. And so, I mean, they can help. I mean, Solaire obviously hit 48 homers two years ago. And He's going to get paid. That man oh. is about to get – because they're – especially when they institute the DH and the NL, because, like, that will even help him Ooh, even further. What about this, though? Freddie even said it. He goes, if you'd have told me November 2nd, I wouldn't have an extension or something online, I'd be surprised. How much do you think they're kicking themselves in the ass now? Because his number just went up. Oh, yep. yeah. Wow. But I still I think he's saying I, I, st- I have a weird thing. I think Freddie Freeman ends up in the Yankees. I don't, I don't Yankees. think he leaves. I think, I think, think Freeman that, leaves. I don't know about the Yankees. But I, I think that, like, the, you know, Cashman does sometimes operate in that smoke and mirrors where it's never the guy they're linked to. Freddie Freeman makes sense. A lefty hitter. First baseman, if they move on from Rizzo, I could see them being like, "This guy's a winner. Let's just I, but throw." But Freddie him costs house. you like one fifty. Yeah, but why do you say no about him leaving? Because what Jabba just said, like they didn't give him an extension. I think he's that's been weird. There for fucking so long. Like, I just so you didn't want him then, but oh, just because we won, you want me now? It's like I just had a vision. I could see him. There's no logic behind me saying that. I just picture him never leaving Atlanta. He's just an Atlanta Brave to me forever. I think he thought he that would look like an alien in another uniform. He thought it until they didn't. Give him an extension. I think that's weird, but I think you win the World Series now. He's one of them. You got to keep that guy. You can't let him walk. Because there's also listen. The NL East is trash. Yeah, they have a. They they should be winning with. And they didn't. They did this without Acuna and Soroka. (laughs) Like they will. They should be, barring something crazy happening. The NL East favorite for the next ten years. Yeah, think about. I mean, they're all so young. But they still have everybody else. Yeah. They signed Albies and Acuna. For cheap, though, that helps. Yeah, oh, yeah, they signed extensions, which and, – and I think, too, part of it, just, like, listening to Freddie and knowing him and his ties. I mean, he's been there since he's been 17 years old. Yeah, right, that's what I'm saying. And I, I, I do think it's weird. I, I guarantee you they had talks. I, it's, it's 100% that they had talks. It, it may have been one of those things where you always hear, too, it's like, hey – if we don't get it done by the All Star break, we're done. Let's not talk about it. Yeah, like, let it not be a distraction. To, yeah, yeah. Let's not. Let's get through it. Well, I mean, it, everything was a distraction to the Braves this year. They had everybody hurt. I mean, they weren't five hundred till August. <laughs> you got everybody coming in. You the lose All-Star obviously. Game. Oh, yeah. your player, and you're just like, what are you doing? So that may have been something too. But just listening to Freddie and just knowing where his heart is and what he's done, I would. It would be hard for me to see him in another uniform especially for what he's done in the embrace, not only from the aspect of playing, but the community side and how much the city has embraced him and what yeah. he's done for the city. He's being so, like a Little League coach right before he's playing in World Series games the same day. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. He's, he's filming Charlie just going way back on those Little League fields, just giving <laughs> high fives. That dude's a legend already. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it's fantastic. What a life. That guy's got a maid. Uh, he's got to go. Uh, Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, you know, we're talking about the Braves just winning the World Series. I, I want to know your guy that obviously won a World Series. Can you take us through in as much detail as you can and remember everything from the final out of the World Series to the World Series parade? Can we get, like, an hour-by-hour hour breakdown <laughs> of those, like, couple of days, few days, however long it was, just the celebrating into the parade? Yeah, it was uh, – so we get done – Obviously, we kind of know going into it, we're getting Pedro. We've got to him pretty early, and we had Pettit on the mound. And Pettit had won every clinching game of that postseason. So, you know, we felt good with him, obviously, on the mound. And so things start going. Matsui goes deep. So we're like, all right, here we go. And everybody start chanting, who's your daddy to Pedro again? So, like, the energy was there. We just had, like, a good vibe. Like, mm-hmm. it's weird because – I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> 
you don't really you don't approach it different than another game but it legitimately you're in november right now and i mean you feel you're just dead i mean your body's tired you're doing everything you can to just get through it and i'll never forget i was literally people talk about out of body experiences i was just telling the story to a buddy the other day and i've never had one and it, people are like yes it happens dead ass i'm literally playing catch and i'm staring myself in the face and literally myself was tell i was like you got one more game you got one more outing and then i'm done i'm shutting you down like literally my body's going to shut down and it, it was something i vividly remember and i'm like wow this is a real statement because we've been going that was the year of the wbc so we reported early mm-hmm. so we we got going two weeks early so you'd had extra time thrown anyways so we get the out, I come out, I come out after Pettit, then Marte comes after me, and then Mo. And so I'm going into the clubhouse, and they're like, hey, whatever you want to keep, you keep. Somehow he goes, I'm not telling you where to put it, but they're going to go through lockers and grab stuff. And I was like, yeah, perfect. So I changed, put my fleece on. We We got these little, like, before GoPros, it was like those mini cams that you could hold and like film. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. We got those as, as one of our gifts. So I had one of the clubhouse kids, you know, filming as we go out. And I mean, from then, it's just kind of chaos. I mean, it's literally everybody's running in. I got smoked with an elbow in the back of the head. Like, <laughs> you don't even care at that point, really. So it doesn't matter. And it was they brought down like all the T-shirts, everything everybody's running around giving hugs then you do all the media stuff i was looking for my dad gave my dad a hug he came down then tried to find my son and he's running around like an idiot he's three just going nuts like so i'm like hey get back here buddy let's go um so then then the the cool thing that that i really appreciated what joe did is he just called all the players in he didn't there was like no media no wives no kids no nothing and we just had like five minutes just with us. Like obviously we wanted to celebrate with everybody else and that's cool. But it was it was cool just to have that little time just with everybody in there to, you know, spray your champagne, give everybody a hug, pour your stuff. And so that was cool. And then probably my second best memory is when my son comes in and he gets full blown sprayed right in the face with champagne. <laughs> Still to this day, he'll tell the story. He's like, I hate champagne. He like, he never forgets it. So for life. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, after that, we got home at about like five thirty in the morning. Um, my son wakes up at like eight thirty. You're just, I mean, you're banged up. You're going. We ended up going to a Knicks game. Oh, funny story. Go to a Knicks game. We're sitting courtside. My son's on his iPad. And Larry Johnson sitting next to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm a huge basketball fan. Yeah. I was like, damn, you're, you were grandma on Family Matters. That's the shit. So that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so my son's on his iPad. And I obviously, he doesn't know me from Adam. And I'm like, can I ask you a huge favor? Like, can you watch my son while I go <laughs> <laughs> at halftime? He's like, yeah, no problem. So here's my son just hanging out with Larry Johnson. And I'm like, this is, this is surreal for me. Because, I mean, I was a huge basketball fan. I mean, Hornets with him and Lo- Zo morning played with I even dropped a fanboy. I was like, dude, I balled out with you in NBA Jam. I <laughs> yeah. killed yeah. in NBA Jam. So yeah, then we uh I do I go play the piano on Jimmy Fallon, uh, make the rounds. The parade was we had to be there at like seven o'clock in the morning. And there's I think like eight buses with just everybody getting on. We have to go to I think it was City Hall. I don't really remember. But they had all this food and everything. And I was there. I went to the parade. Yeah, I did too. It was awesome. It was cold. Time. Very cold. Yeah. I So I was on the float with Chin Ming Wong and Marte and, uh, gosh, I think there was somebody else. But I mean, the fun, I mean, the funnest part about that was just like seeing everybody, like people just in office buildings, just hucking paper out of the windows. Mm-hmm. And then I got it on video and I actually just – posted it to my son's like when my son graduates i'm already starting to put stuff together for graduation which is i hate even talking about that but (laughs) my son is getting toilet paper that's been thrown on the float and he is firing rockets back in the crowd he's chucking it just not caring (laughs) just chucking it back he like i mean he has he has an idea but 
I mean, if it was now, he'd understand. But he literally is just like finding stuff on the ground and just throwing it back in the crowd. It, I mean, it was fantastic. And then, That's so awesome. yeah, then we went to went to dinner and Nebraska was playing Oklahoma that Saturday, and I was just so tired. So we hopped on a plane and headed back, and they played. New York State of Mind, and I got a standing ovation for three straight minutes. Hell yeah. <laughs> it, wow. it was pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah that's incredible. You were up in the suite, I assume? No, I actually, no. It's, dude, I like being on the field. I like seeing the stuff. So, oh. legitimately, I told everybody because there was, I was supposed to do Saturday Night Live that day, but Nebraska, Oklahoma is a big deal to us. I mean, so I was like, I just want to go home. It's been stuff every day. I mean, you're sleeping for like three or four hours. I mean, obviously it was awesome having my family there, but sometimes that just gets just gets long. And I was like, I just want to go home. You wait, you were and gonna so host I, Saturday Night Live? It was Taylor Swift, and they were gonna do a segment. I went in on Thursday, <laughs> and wait, just you so or we, like a bunch of Yankees? I, it was. I was just with me and my manager, and that I didn't know anything else. They were like, "What do you want to do?" And I was like. I went and met everybody, did everything. Lauren Michaels came down, met him, did all that stuff. And, but I was just like, I was so exhausted at that point. I was like, I just want to go home. I just want to relax, get away from it. it. It was already, they were already telling us, oh, less than 100 days before spring training. And I'm like, we just finished the season. <laughs> like, give me time to catch my breath at this point. But yeah, so came in, I walked into Memorial Stadium at Tom Osborne Field and like, Nobody was there. It was just me going in because my dad used to work the games. And so he was actually still in New York. So I was just going to say hi to everybody. And they started playing that with, like, nobody in the stands. It was sweet. And then they they did a thing for me. I think it was, like, the second quarter or something like that. That's awesome. Let me ask you this, though. So Derek Jeter, always known for, you know, only he only cares about winning. He has a great quote where he's there. someone asks him, what's it better, losing the World Series, don't make the playoffs? He goes, was not matter? You just lost. You didn't win the final game. Who cares? What's it like being on a team where you're fighting for the World Series title all year long, and then he finally, like Derek Jeter, the winner versus Derek Jeter, like just the pl- like the moment he achieves the peak, like who does he transform into? Like we fucking finally did it. Let's fucking go. like Derek Jeter when he achieves victory. What is that guy like? Uh, honestly, it's really it's nothing different. He's just the I same mean, guy. Okay. I've been. <laughs> I've been on both sides of it. I mean, we we lost to Texas in the ALCS in Texas. Um, you know, obviously we lost at other times and we won in 09. So I, I think it's – he takes time to, I, I think, on both sides of it, winning and losing. Like, he, he will always take time to explain stuff. Like, it, it's – and it's it's the least time to expect it. It's like you're making a sandwich, and next thing you know, it's a 15 minute conversation and he just gave you some of the best advice you can get <laughs> and vice versa. Like you never, you never know when it's going to happen. Like, I think he's just so good at understanding when the right time is to do stuff. And I mean, obviously he enjoyed everything with us and, but I mean, that's just the, the way he is. I mean, he would still, he still was Derek. I mean, obviously he wasn't the Derek in 96 when there was no cameras and no Twitter, and no cell phones. Yeah. And he understood that. And, but I just, him winning and him losing, I don't think, like, he's a guy you never could tell if he went 0 for 4 or 4 for 4. And and I was fortunate enough to play with some guys that were really good that that was the same common denominator of all these guys. Huh. And I just think for him, he was so good at reading people and reading situations. And I think in all the years I played with him, I think there was only one time where he actually got on me on the field because I was bitching about a pop fly home run that scraped over the right field wall and I mean, he just was like, dude, you can't change it. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And I think that's about the only time where it was like at that moment where he actually said something. It was always like he'd let things calm down, understand the situation. And then, like I said, you'd be sitting in the lounge or going in the training room doing something. And next thing you know, it's a 15, 20-minute conversation about kind of what transpired and how we changed it, how we get better from it, how we learn from it. So I think that was the greatest thing that he did. What do you remember seeing out of A-Rod after they won? Because he is a guy that had so much pressure on him. He hadn't won yet. He has obviously the huge uh, playoff run. Could you see Could you like see the weight be lifted off his shoulders? I think as soon as he hit the homer off Joe Nathan in the division series, I think that's originally where like he was like, okay, I got the hit. Right. And then, you know, obviously he gets the hit off Lidge and 
there was there was just so many hits, but I think that one Oppo off Joe was like he had been in the situation so many times before and finally was like, Okay, now pe and I think people obviously looked at it too. It's like, well, he got the big hit now. And then he just he kept kind of building off that and, and going that whole postseason. And he was awesome for us. And so I, I think it's there's always that turn in the postseason or in the season or in general in your career where something happens where it clicks and you're like, it's that weight. You're like, okay, I did it. I got it out of the way, good or bad. Like, I mean, it's there's nothing ever on a baseball field now that's going to catch me off guard. I, it happened my first year in the big leagues with all the bugs and everything. So there was nothing. I had five streakers in my career. Like <laughs> that's so. <awesome>. No, <laughs> I, I had one in Fenway. I had one. I had one full butt naked streaker in Seattle. <laughs> full bush, full everything. Good. You gotta. You gotta you're gonna streak. You gotta have a bush. Yeah. I don't like that they don't show them. Ah, uh, well, bushes. Allowed no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see some naked dudes on the baseball. Field. I don't like that they don't show the people run on the field and get hit. Like I don't. I yeah, I agree. Like because, but I also do understand it. But I don't. So like, they always say it's because they don't want it to encourage. Encourage. The behavior. But if you let's say take the force to another level like you beat the shit out of him <laughs> then you're like showing right, send fear a like hey like oh yeah, yeah yeah we'll show you but you're gonna get like knocked unconscious yeah i don't uh, know if people are gonna run anymore <laughs> are you uh are you sick of the nats uh question and also like no i mean it's are you at barbecues what just didn't see that coming. No, I, he said the bugs. <laughs> From streakers he said to the, the bugs. midges. He said the bugs. I was like, I'm thinking about you like a barbecue. You going like this with a fucking gnat coming at you now? It's it's never. I mean, it's literally never. It doesn't matter. Like we'll be at a baseball, one of my son's baseball games or something, and there'll be a bug or something. Somebody will say something. It's <laughs> it's it, it it's never ending. I mean, it's, it's part of end. what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's annoying. But is there like, a former player, former teammate who will fuck with you the most, or fucked at the time, messed with you the most about that? Not, re I mean, not really. The only one was kind of it was a actually Derek because <laughs> I mean, if you watch the video, he's at shortstop doing this, yeah. blah blah blah, and I was like, man, I'm over here in my rookie year trying to get outs, and I was like, why didn't you come like slow the game down? And he goes, I tried to, but every time I got closer to the mound, the bugs got worse. I go, <laughs> oh, so I appreciate that. I mean, I'm over here just battling right now. I'm he's doing looking foot out for himself. It's like, yeah, I tried, but yeah, there's right. some fucked yeah. on the bugs. I ain't going near there. <laughs> you were on your own, pal. Yeah, no. Safe over here. Yeah, it was. Matsui was warming up after I came out, gave up. We, they ended up tying it. Matsui was warming up in the clubhouse, and you got to go upstairs in Cleveland. And I was pissed, obviously. I lawn darted my, my glove and threw it in my locker and literally, like, Matsui like tapped me on the back and bugs went everywhere and he goes, oh, "Holy shit!" Because <laughs> I, because I couldn't, I couldn't see anything and like he and they all of a sudden like he hit my back and they like went everywhere. I mean, he was the best. Like every dinner and everything, Matsui and I always sat next to each other because he was fifty five and I was sixty two. So all the dinners and everything that we went, we'd always end up sitting next to each other. So Wait a second. you know, you, you get to know. You start you you sit in number order when yeah, you go out. What's up with that? Well, it's got to be like a organization no, no, like, events I no assume. when we do like the welcome home dinners oh. and stuff like that <laughs> i was like you go to no we don't go to apple like, all right every, i don't say if they go like no boo, every like, team like, dinner every seating. they go yeah they go <laughs> out back or something like that gotta get a number order yeah. here guys <laughs> yeah no like when we do all like our yankee function stuff where, like we'd always do one in spring training we'd always do one when we would come back and so yeah, I mean, you just get to know them on like just a you know just bullshitting kind of level and so it i mean it's always fun to get to understand those guys perspective because that not only are they great here like they're globally famous for things that they've done in japan obviously for what he did even before he came here yeah and i heard stories of like during their time of spring training there'd be like 35 reporters but people would get up in the middle of the night because spring training would start and they'd want to see how everything was going here so yeah it's cool i mean there's like i said the nats things but yeah matsui's quote was probably one of the funniest because he kind of <laughs> kind of made me just shake my head because i i didn't know how bad they were because i hadn't seen it i don't think anyone i mean i knew they were in my face i don't think anyone whatever. anyone not from cleveland had ever seen that before no 
For sure not. Yeah. I still haven't seen it since. I feel like Brett Gardner, if he was on the team, he would have like had bugs at your locker the next day. Just That's after what we know about what he did to oh Cole, like rubbing in the he, spider tag thing so to Cole. Right. To Jabba, he would have been he would have had like moths flying yeah. at Jabba the next day. It'd be like too soon. But he dude. he was on the team though, but he wasn't he, he wasn't, wasn't like, he wasn't a veteran I status to up, do that. I thought right. he came up in 08. Uh, right. Yeah. He was well. He was with us. He, I mean, right. He didn't. I guess he wasn't on the team then, but he had like known all of us from just being in, in the spring minors. training and but stuff. But he didn't together. have that veteran yeah. status right. to fuck with you. Yeah. No. Yeah. And see, but at, at that point too, like in 07, we really didn't have. There wasn't really the the jokester part. Like it's so funny, like how the culture changed in my first three years. Like from the fist pumps to how everybody hated it, so now everybody celebrates it. To, yeah. you know, I, now I we get personalities. <laughs> yeah, and, and and it was. I mean, we went back and forth. I had arguments with a lot of people about. It. I go, if, and, and to my own fault, sometimes I listened and was like, okay, you have to do it the way it's supposed to be done, and and that's my own fault. But that's just you know living and learning and, and understanding yourself. And now it's like it's celebrated. But now they're like, oh, I love how they're showing emotion, this, that, and another thing. And it's like. Well, it was a little bit different too. Like yeah. when I first came up, yeah. nobody wanted to see it. And that's a good point. You know, that's that's part of it. Now that now it's celebrated when mm-hmm. they see it, they're like, "Oh, we love that." But when I did it, I was getting in trouble saying it wasn't the Yankee way. This that, and another thing, and <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, it was." I mean, I had so many conversations. I'll never forget 2008. We're playing the Blue Jays, and I had a Frank Thomas poster up in my room just because it was like a cool poster. And I like his name was the Big Hurt. Like it was yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. And he came out and put his arm around me. Mind you, he was like choking me because he's a large human. <laughs> and he was like, hey, kid, keep doing what you're doing. I respect it. And it's like, at that point, I'm like, you know what? We're going to get a Hall of Famer. And, and he, and it's not like I'm disrespecting you. I'm just, obviously, I'm excited. And that's something that they had never seen before. And especially from a kid that only played three months in the minor league. So it's, you know, something you had to sure. prove and do whatever. But, yeah, it's just it's so funny how the culture changes. And you're talking about Guardy being the jokester or whatever. I mean, there was some stuff that happened, nothing crazy. And, and the rhetoric that went back and forth and people were like, oh, that's terrible. Like, no, that's what you do. You see you see these guys and are around them more than your own family. Like, yeah. you have to. You're going to get in arguments. You're going to have fun. You're going to mess with each other. That's just part of what being around each other does so much. Yeah. What, what's the worst argument you ever got in with a teammate? I don't know if there was really a, like a worse argument. I think there was just when Mo tried to shush me. I'm a, I'm a grown man. You can come. I'm literally talking to my family. I didn't know you were doing interviews. I'm literally talking to my family, signing oh, this, balls and I, stuff I, I for I forgot him. about this. I kind of did too. What year was this? This is in Kansas. This is in Kansas City. So, of course, it's the closest place that I play to my family. So, my entire family's there. Cousins, everybody. And... Like, I see people in dugout, but I'm really not paying attention. Like, I'm standing right on top of the – at Kaufman, just right on the railing, signing stuff and saying hi, like, hey, we'll meet you after at the hotel, blah, blah, blah. And he, like, looked and wasn't – I honestly wasn't paying attention. And I didn't – I didn't obviously realize who it was because – and he shushed. I was like, I'm a grown man. Don't shush me. And it, and it wouldn't have been a big deal. And me and Mo even talked about it, like – I was like, I didn't see you, and he goes, I didn't see you were talking to your family either. Yeah, it was just and it just and it just so happened that the media was there, and they, I mean, they blew like I literally went on Twitter and took a picture with Mo afterwards. Like, yeah. it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, they, you guys like, both apologized to, and moved on. Like he squashed it. Yeah, it, it wasn't a big deal. Like because I didn't see what he was doing because I couldn't see him because there was reporters. So I just assumed it was somebody talking about a story or whatever i didn't see it was mo at all and he and, thought you were probably just talking to random people like not your family yeah or was, it's both like hey throw me the ball and whatever and then i'm like i remember i was talking to my cousin actually and i was like hey yeah we're gonna go back to the hotel i'll meet you over there blah 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 and then he did i was like whoa hold on time out here <laughs> and then i looked and i was like oh well this is gonna get blown out of proportion i know how this is gonna happen Real fast. literally it, it it wasn't 30 minutes my agent and my manager are like, what happened? <laughs> and I'm like, honestly, it was nothing. And then so I just went to Mo and I was like, hey, dude, I apologize because I didn't know. I didn't know you were. I think it was it was for something for his last 
his tour. He was doing something right. and talking about it. And obviously I didn't know. And he was like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what you were doing. I just assumed you were yelling and being loud. I was like, oh, I was actually talking to my family, trying to figure out what we were going to do because they weren't going to come in and wait for traffic. They were just going to meet us there. So, but yeah, I just ended up taking, we took a picture, the arms around each other. And I was like, it's going to get blown out. And he's like, yeah, I know. And I go, I'll always lose this one because you're yeah. moan. I get that, which is fine. Yeah. Which you is gotta, fine. You, gotta, no, you understand no that. With that. Yeah. The fact that you understood that but is I, good. Yeah. Because there's some people that probably wouldn't understand that. <laughs> But at the same time, too, I don't care who you are. I'm a grown ass man. You're yeah. not gonna shush. Me. Yeah. It's not gonna True. happen. Sorry. Getting shushed is bad. It's tough to come back. Yeah, there's some. Sh- there's been some shush gates. I feel like here in, in the office. Like, oh yeah, you was it Nate? Don't... Did Nate do a shush? I'm trying to remember. Probably. There was one. You just can't shush someone. It's sh- it's so rude. Yeah. It's. So, uh, yeah, you, you mind being quiet? <laughs> just talk to me like a man. Just yeah, like Java said. Yeah. yeah, there's other ways to do it. it. And honestly, like it's one of those ones where like. You could be just jacking around in the office or whatever, and somebody's in. If in the context of what it is, you can tell if it's like, oh shit, he didn't really understand what was going on, or he's just trying to be a dick. Sure. Yeah, you could tell. You know, you can always. That's one of those things where you can just like tell. I mean, it's the same thing as you know when they shush people on the basketball court or whatever. Like, hey, all right, I got the point. Yep. We got it. We can <laughs> hear you. You know, so there's there's different aspects to it. So. But yeah, it was it was, and I wouldn't even say it was an argument. It was kind of like one of those things where you just didn't know the context of each other, and then you're like, then once I mean, you're grown men. We're not in high school. It's right. like, hey, my bad. Like I didn't know, and it wasn't a big deal. But everybody else made it a big deal. I didn't. I didn't really care. Yeah, so that's the New York media for you. <laughs> yeah, um, gotta love them. Yeah, um, completely off topic. What we were talking about before with candy. You want to ask him about candy? Oh yeah. Do you think do you think chocolate's considered candy? Or do you think isn't that its own isn't its own category within candy? My guy, I think it's candy. It's not chocolate is chocolate. Candy is like, fucking like Starburst is candy. Like a, like they're a, both candy. A gummy bear is like kind of candy. Like, but can, chocolate no. is a specific kind of candy. If I'm like, if I'm like, hey Jabba, you want to go? What do you? What do you? You want candy from Seven Eleven? He goes, no, give me a chocolate bar. You oh, would you say would no, give me a chocolate bar, or you would what? be like, oh yeah, give me a kick. Give me a cho- give me some chocolate. You don't think a little piece of Twix is is candy? No, I think it's chocolate. It's That's candy. Crazy. <laughs> I'm just what do you think? Uh I mean, I'm just now looking. <laughs> you look chocolate, a fruit preparation in the form of a paste or solid block made from roasted or ground cocoa seeds that has nothing to do with candy. <laughs> But that all right, you go to Halloween. Uh, if someone gives you if someone gives you chocolate, you're gonna be like, "What's this? This the, well, isn't candy." No, the okay, argument, okay, I'll create this too. But what about like chocolate covered candy? Uh, what true. does that mean? What <laughs> the fuck does that mean? <laughs> it's just chocolate. Like, yeah, chocolate. I know, but it's like those box of chocolates. You get a cherry or something, or a hard candy, or something wrapped in chocolate. What like what is that? Are you so? So let's say like a pretzel, chocolate wrapped pretzel. Is that? Candy? I mean, that's but that's that's not. Is no, that that's considered like a, a candy. Yeah, okay, exactly. that's it's, not candy. No, yeah. no, that shows you that chocolate's its own thing because it would be called candy pretzels. No. <laughs> yes, it is. Only argument that you have is that if you go to the candy aisle, chocolate bars are there. That's so the that's only a argument strong... you have. It's a big I argument. Con- I, so, would you consider chocolate closer to potato chips or uh, sour patch kids? It's its own thing. It's not uh, okay. One, well, not on them. the spectrum, where no, is it closer to? It's not to? any of them, you moron. It's what do you mean? It's, I'm not saying. I'm asking if there's a spectrum of food. We know it's not fucking pizza. It's far from pizza. Where between potato chips and and sour patch kids would you put chocolate? In both, in the middle. So in your mind, <laughs> you're an idiot. If you compare this to like alcohol, like Jaeger is liqueur. It's its own thing. That's your mind. What chocolate is? It's its own thing. It's not yeah, like, like but that's a that's a that's a true aspect though. There's a difference between a liqueur and so you have you can have a Patron lime liqueur that is totally different than the tequila that has a liquor. I think we're winning, Java. No, I, I just think you're wrong. Grocery think... store thing is their best best argument. And I gave it to you. <laughs> it's our best Idiots. argument. <laughs> Why would you do argument? such a thing? Because I know people are gonna listen and be like, oh, what about that? I'm like, I'm getting it all out there. Chocolate's its own thing. If you I if I heard. tell you if you can just go to the store and get candy, I'm gonna say, all right, give me heard, a Kit Kat bar. He's right. You ever heard of something candy covered? 
Yeah, candy covered apple. <laughs> no, it's called a candy. That's apple. a caramel. That's a caramel apple, <laughs> jackass. Oh yeah, Carame- No, there's candy apples. I think I've heard of candy apples. Yeah, like this, like candy yeah, apple, like candy apple. Sucker. Yeah, is it chocolate on there? Yeah, no, so it's caramel and it's chocolate. a chocolate. There's no chocolate on a candy. Assorted apple. caramel apples. That's different. Oh, I will say, chocolate covered strawberry is for sure like its own thing. That's not candy. No, it's not. But that's not. like a del. I don't. That's a because dessert. Because chocolate's its own thing. You all have candy covered strawberry. Super strawberries. easy candy apple recipe. Candy apples are a thing. Yeah, candy, candy apple, apples are for sure a thing. But there's no chocolate. But I don't oh, 100 percent. I don't think those are chocolate. No, because no. it's not fucking candy. Chocolate is candy. Uh, this isn't even. <laughs> yes, it is. We're just. No, are you on? You're on me, Yeah, definitely. Chocolate is candy. Okay. Cool. No, it's not. So it's three against two. We li- <laughs> okay, okay. Let's say uh, a strict can we, can we, can we, like, household. Out, like, yeah, tweet out a live poll, Noah, from the short porch. Tweet yeah, out first yeah, tweet since like five days, so like six days. Well, on the Twitter. thing, job. The, the internet's dumb. They're all dumb, and they're not gonna realize. Oh, gonna be- the internet's yeah. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what they're it not is. gonna realize our argument uh, without us saying that. There's no. It, you should, candy if you're come. right, you shouldn't need to explain a full verbal would, no, argument. I, but right. that wasn't even like a question I had to think about. Like I, I've always felt chocolate's its own category. Like when I think of candy, I think of like Jolly Ranchers and you know Starburst Skittles, things with like flavor. Yes, yes. And I'm not, I'm yes. not trying to. That's just the way I've always thought about. It. I've never really been presented the question, but the more I think <laughs> about it, it's like I've always thought chocolate is like just chocolate. It's just chocolate. See, you're a smart man. <laughs> You didn't see that coming, did you? I kind of did. <laughs> if, if, there's strict, like a very if there's strict parents who are like, uh, you're not allowed to eat candy, do you think the kid's allowed to eat chocolate? Yeah, because dark know. chocolate's healthy. <laughs> well, that's different. Dark see, chocolate. he's a parent, so he knows things. Damn it. <laughs> that was a good one. Damn. All right, but, but if your son like, wanted to have like, candy I before love, bed when he was younger, energy. would you would you let him eat Twix and Kit Kat before bed? I'd rather have him that than a fruit snack because fruit snack gets stuck in your gums, creates cavities with all the sugar. But at the same time, that's why you do a little piece of dark chocolate or something like that. So if he wanted something sweet, that's always would be the way it is. Oh, am, am I not? Is it thing. one lesser of two evils? No, they both still have sugar. But at least I felt like as a better parent getting dark chocolate than, you know, going to eat it's just three starbursts. The only are it's. There's no candy covered anything. It's just, you have to be your own category when it's chocolate. Candy is a confection that features sugar as a principal ingredient. Chocolate has sugar. Yeah, but look at the definition. The category called is. sugar confectionery encompasses any sweet confection, including chocolate, chewing gum, but and sugar candy. And gum is not candy. I agree gum's not candy. The Google machine did to say that. Oh, so how can so you can't sit here and contradict yourself and say gum is not candy, but chocolate is when they both just said the same statement. That well, you I don't care what gu- this Google thing says. <laughs> yeah. For the sake of the, the argument, I'll say also, gum is candy because it has chocolate candy. You know, because is gum is its own category. So is chocolate. So you don't think gum is? We win. No. We I think win. it. I think is it the could be out, a little Noah? like. I think I chocolate could be more of a crossover is, is than chocolate gum, candy. honestly. Yes or no? <laughs> Imp- go important, all caps, colon, is chocolate candy. Okay. Very important. Or would you consider chocolate candy? Or Yeah, just whatever. One of those, either of those words. See, but the the way you word it could also. That's what I'm saying. I'd be careful. Yeah, yeah word it our way. Word it yeah, our the way. guy who's doing the think. polls definitely fucking pandering. Well, to if his you were it, it would be a paragraph. You got to explain. Hey, I, it. I already tweeted something. So, <laughs> okay. oh, I'm sure this made sense. You've never tweeted. Oh god, chocolate's not candy. I, it's I its own. It, it is. It's. Uh, oh, you Wait, actually like kind of made sense there. Yeah, tweet. I have some tough times with my punctuations. Um, oh, and if you mess up the. Twitter police just go hammer. Oh, every tweet I have, they fucking kill. Oh, <laughs> they find something. I don't. Well, you also man. do make a lot of. Mistakes. I don't double check. I fire off the hip and press tweet. I never just look go. Just said. yeah, sounds good. What was your Luke Voy one? Luke in your mouth. Luke in your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> Luke in your mouth's an all time. Luke in your mouth. Unbelievable. And you kept like trying to do it as a running thing. Yeah, like, it didn't when, work. And, and no one caught on. No, no, no one. They liked, just always thought it was a. Type no one like Luke in your mouth. <laughs> 
Oh, you tried to you tried to run with it? Yeah, after I fucked up, I'm like, ah, maybe they'll, let's see if I catch on. They're like, oh, what are you what are you trying to say? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. And then there was the pegging thing, which we'll we won't get into that. But yeah, the was, pegging was tough. That was a lot. Um, Ooh, that's yeah. You can't win that one there. No, no, nope. Um, as we begin to wrap up here, um, I guess go back to the Yankees real quick. What's your dream off season for them? Like, what do you think that what what what's what gets this team back on track? To like, okay, we can cook again in the AL East, contend for a World Series title. Because currently, as they are, I do not believe that's where they're at. I, I mean, obviously, health is 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 really important. I mean, obviously, trying to keep those guys on the field. You got guys that are really, really good when they're on the field. We've obviously seen it. Um, but they were pretty healthy, think, all things considered. They yeah, were pretty healthy. Yeah, this for year. the most part. I mean, obviously, I think I think we get a we need another pitcher for sure. Um, I think obviously going in, we're going to get a great arm back and I think Seve's going to be fantastic. And we've seen glimpses of it just being in the pen and yeah. him being healthy, obviously cool coming. Um, where do you go at shortstop? Got, what's your, what's your target at shortstop? That that's one I've literally, I've looked at so many times and you're going to look at obviously two of the big names. You're going to look at Correa and Seager. Mm-hmm. And if you literally look at them side by side, they're almost identical. All-star games, draft pick, just numbers wise. They're literally almost identical. One guy hits lefty though. And, and that does play. Right. It, and I mean, it's going to, and it's, but and at, at what point it's not like, do you, do you now go, like you said, with what cash does every once in a while, the smoke and mirrors and look at an older shortstop, and do a two, three year deal waiting for Volpe to get ready? Or do you say, hey, we're going to ride this out, see what happens, let's give the money? I, I could see both sides of the fence. I, I think if it's either one of the two, I, I, you can't go wrong. One's going to play a little bit different just because of right field. But I also think that. Correa also way better with, defender, though. That definitely, that's the other argument. The other oh, side. without a. I mean, some of the plays that he makes, just, I mean, and just his. I mean, people are going to talk about whatever the Astros are. I don't. I don't really care. Yeah. But just the the listening to him, like he keeps all of the stats of what the runner speed is in his hat, so he understands. Okay, I have time to set my feet. The play he made on Dansby Swanson up the middle, knowing doesn't have time to set his feet. Yeah. And if you always watch him throw, and and I always watch this too because my son plays shortstop is he never deviates from his motion. Everything is, which is weird because it's over the top. You always see guys throwing here, doing that. Mm-hmm. But he's a guy that is always consistently, and I, I probably can count on a couple fingers the amount of times I've seen him not throw from his normal slot. I mean, and obviously it's your bare hand in a ball, you know, that's obviously you can't get over the top. But sure. I just think the way he plays defense is fantastic. I, I think numbers-wise hitting, I don't, I don't think there's one that has a – distinct advantage over the other does the short porch and right come into play I, I don't know or is it hey do we save a hundred million and go get an older shortstop and you know do the two years and you know kind of go in that route I, I i could see both happening but i, I think there's gonna and I, I look at it like this oh eight we didn't make the playoffs oh nine aj cc swish tex like we didn't know anything about tag. We knew we were talking about it. We didn't really – AJ, we knew we were going to get – we probably knew we were going to get CC and Tex was up there. But then you fire AJ in, and then you feed on some other guys. So I, I think I just kind of look at it based upon that. It's like, hey, just – you have the pieces. You know, let's add – let's add a big piece, and maybe we can add a couple little ones that, you know, they can go hand in hand because I, I just think the talent's there. They understand that you know you got a front line starter and you got guys that understand the game and can change the game with one swing. I yeah. mean, Rizzo is going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, my biggest fear is Tommy. they just go Seager and that's it, and that would be like, and then they get really really small after that. I they need to have like an 08 off season. The only thing really... is, are there enough guy like? Is I don't know if there's a pitcher to do that. I think the pitcher is going to have to come off a trade market. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, did you did you see there's there's other than the guys that haven't been qualified, there's 160 free agents that just filed. Okay. But the starting so, pitcher I mean, market's very thin for the most part. 
You're looking at like a um, yes Kevin and, Gosman. Yes and no. Kevin Gosman and, and Robbie Ray are probably I your headliners. Not getting Scherzer. And Scherzer is going to command, I think, $40 million a year. He's going to try and reset the record. And for, Robbie Ray and Kevin Gosman, neither of them are like really get me going. Gosman is a guy I think that Cashman could like. Okay, we can get this guy 60 million maybe 3 years whatever and let's cook from there. I guess. I was going to say that that's a more realistic just and the thing is why they're not creating a bunch of buzz cuz it's like look at the mark like Gosman was awful in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Awful. And then he goes and yeah. figures it out and oh awful is an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> I mean but good for him that he went and figured it out and you know, got going. I mean, shoot, his numbers for the first three quarters of the season, you're like, this dude's winning this Cy Young. It's right. not even a question. Now, he'll, fin- he'll I mean, probably finish top him. three still, but, like, yeah, he was great. Yeah. And then Robbie Ray, obviously. I played with Robbie when he first came up with the Tigers, and he always had the stuff. You know, just he finally put it together. It, it might have been because he didn't have any blood to his brain because his pants were so tight. Yeah. Was he, so has he, he always done taken. that? It pisses me off. No. No. It pisses me off. I thought – I thought I always made fun of Verlander because he wore them tight ass pants. Yeah, these things were on another level. Yeah, they were. They were crazy. And you know what? You can't. Even, I can't even. You can't be mad at him. He went out and shoved and did what he needed to do. So it's just they're not like super sexy picks. I mean, it's just not. It's not a guy. Mind you, Robbie Ray throws hard. Like, and he's got good stuff, and he punches out two hundred. But he's just not like the. It's not the flashy. It's not the Scherzer, and I mean. And, you hear all the stories about his bullpens and stuff. Wow. They are all true. You're talking about Ray? Fantastic to watch. No, Max. Is oh, Scherzer, Scherzer, yeah. Well, Scherzer, yeah. Dude, what was the thing? Uh, what was the pitcher? Uh, Price, maybe? Oh, that he made he him David sign? David Price a- sign an NDA? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what was that? He, he made David Price sign, and he's like, first. Wait, wait was this was the Dodgers? It was for him to watch a bullpen. Yeah, with the because, Dodgers. Well, because they were also in the Tigers together, right? But this is with yeah, the Yeah, I was actually the one that broke the story to David that he was getting traded to us in the Tigers. Okay. <laughs> he was on the golf course, and I was like, I called him. Because everybody, like, the doors were all shut and stuff. And me and Ver were like, what's going on? Because like, we had no idea. Mm-hmm. And he's like, something big got to be going on. And I was like, you heard about Price, like DP, right? And he was like, I think that's it. And so I was just like, let me try to see what we got. He was playing golf. Five minutes after I called him, he texted me. And he goes, dude, I just got called and said I need to head to the clubhouse. Jesus. Damn. So he had had a, he had had a heads up, and he's like, dude, I would have had no idea. I wouldn't have answered my phone and looked at it. He goes, I would have just played golf. That's what just happened with Blake Bortles. Yeah. Blake Bortles was even through seven. Yeah, they said they're just flying him right now. Yeah, he was even through seven looking at double bogey. And he walked off the course. <laughs> if he was on birdie or par, I bet he's like, ah, I hit some traffic on the airport, finished. Fi-. He's Probably like a so. nine and a half handicap. He, like, that's a, he's Great playing score. one of the best rounds of like his life, Blake Bortles. You always have those stories. When I got called up to the big leagues, I was eating Wendy's. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you have all those weird ones you're like, and you'll never forget it because it's like, how random could this be? Oh, yeah, I'm just sitting over this eight-foot putt. Oh, hey, you're going to go uh, fly to Green Bay. Yeah. You go. <laughs> I'll never forgive Wendy's for uh, taking away snack wraps. Don't understand. Yeah. Don't understand that logic. Um, Their Jabba, spicy nugs are fire. Yes, yeah. they are. Uh, Jabba, this was awesome. We need you to let us know when you're coming back to the city. Check out um, American Whiskey. you gotta got to get the gang there next year. Got to have a live show there. Um, for the games, because obviously COVID threw it. We were going to do this, but like COVID really just fucked everything up. Right. Um, let's hopefully everything stays as it is or gets better. And then, um, yeah, we got to hit up American Whiskey. to get you back out here. And uh, yeah, perfect. And it was do very this good the time I went. Yeah, same. But we've had a yeah mid a, our, sh- our midtown ones open now, so it's finally getting going and yeah. we're picking up. We got all the stuff going. There, was so. there a spitting chicklets thing there? I remember. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great. That's an awesome time. A rot. I think A Rod did something there too. Okay, well, yeah. Wouldn't if shock I remember me. right. Wouldn't shock me the slightest. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. This was awesome uh, for coming on for episode number three hundred. Um, best of luck. Your kids basically. It sounds like he's going to be an Olympian and like a Hall of Famer oh. in every sport at this point. <laughs> you, 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 last time we talked, you were like, "Oh, he's picking up tennis. He's a, he's never played before. He's playing a tournament." You told us he's twenty four and zero or something like that. So you got the next Federer on your hands. It looks like. <laughs> Son yeah, he bitch. won. Uh, he won the double city tournament with his partner. So yeah, it was pretty fun to watch. Unreal. They had to win. They had to win five matches in one day. 
Jeez. How many sets? Two or three? They so they on, they only go one. It's it's the same thing. So, okay. but I mean, it's still a long ass day. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun to watch though. That's that's so yeah. cool. Um, yeah. So best luck with all that. Thank you again for coming on, and we will talk soon, my friend. We will. Mush, we're getting crushed. Seventy nine percent to twenty one percent. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, that's over, not... over a thousand votes. Yeah. Wait till wait till they hear about our arguments. I think it might just help us. <laughs> no. How, shut up. <laughs> Unreal. How, about, how long did it, oh he's put it on for forty seven more minutes? We got a chance, maybe. Yeah, we got a chance. Oh, he only put it on for an hour. Wow. Some people sometimes do twenty four. This is a quick poll. Good. Make love it. it. Quick. Yes. Just just wind that clock, baby. Uh, unreal. All right, Jabba. Thanks once again, friend. I love it. All right, guys. Thanks, Jabba. Have a good one. Appreciate See it. Yep, you got it. Later. <laughs>